you seen this? This is awesome! internet Robert T garden back again with a T garden quick tip tutorial just a tip just enough to see if it feels good today I'm talking about something that has revolutionized my life and saved me a ridiculous amount of time I know I say this all the time but this one is incredibly practical and something I use on almost a daily basis so here's the deal I'm a professional videographer. That's how I support my family. This YouTube thing is just fun for me and the fact that people get enjoyment out of it blows my mind. So I like making these videos and sharing things that I find that have made my life a lot more useful uh, with you fine people because I think that you'll enjoy them too. And there may be some videos on auto reframe that already exist, but this is actually a part of my everyday workflow and I get messages about this exact same problem that Adobe had found a solution to with the latest update of Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is usually what happens. I get an email or I pitch something to a client. And part of my pitch is a deliverables list that I need from them or my monthly retainer clients that I work with on a consistent basis will send me a request to reframe or reposition different pieces of content we've already made for different platforms. So I'll get a 16 by nine, a regular wide screen shot like you're looking at right now. That's usually what I'm cutting and shooting my pictures to. I rarely shoot to story. Sometimes I do, but rarely. Um, so I'll, I'll edit something on a 16 by nine. I'll send it over for approval. They'll dig it and they'll say, but we need it for stories. We need it for Instagram feed. So either a four by five or a one by one. We need it for Twitter. We need it for Facebook. And each one of those has its own unique style that things perform best in. So I'll have to take this same piece of content and mainly go in and create different sequences and then reframe and move my subjects into a manner that makes sense for that particular framing option. With this new auto reframe, all I do is create different sequences that are preset with this one by one, four by five, nine by 16 vertical formats. And Adobe Premiere goes in and automatically analyzes and moves the subject of that particular piece of footage to the center of the frame. It's unbelievable. I'm gonna break out of this environment and we're gonna go into the office I'm gonna show you a real life example of a piece of content that I would be working on that I'd have to deliver in multiple formats. And I'm gonna show you a way that you can render each individual sequence at the same time with the click of one button. All right, so back in the office and I have here a cut that I put together that is in a 16 by nine format. It's shot mostly in 4K. Uh, and so I know for sure that I have to deliver this in a 16 by nine format, but I'm also going to have to give a one by one, so square for Instagram feed, um, and also a nine by 16, so a vertical for stories. Um, but the 16 by nine is gonna be for YouTube and for uh, Facebook. So I know for this client, for most of my clients, I'm going to have to deliver in multiple aspect ratios for them uh, just because our our content doesn't live in one particular place. It's not a static piece of content. We wanna populate it across multiple platforms. And so this is the way that we can do this. So creating a new sequence, auto reframing a sequence is actually a pretty simple process for the most part. We're gonna go up here to our project bin and we're gonna click on the sequence that we're looking at. We're gonna right click on that sequence and go to auto reframe sequences. That's about a third of the way down the little window that pops up. And we click auto reframe and we see this window dialog box come up. The sequence name is going to have two different appendages on it. One is the 16 by nine that was already in the sequence name that I had. And for this one, we'll just use the one by one. We'll start there first. And so the aspect ratio that I can choose from would be square one by one vertical four by five, nine by 16 vertical. Uh, and then a 16 by nine horizontal. Or if I have a reason to, I can create any number of sequences that I want to by putting in some type of custom setting in here. But like I said, for this one, we're gonna keep it as a one by one. Uh, don't nest clips, this will replace your current motion adjustment. I'll explain that in just a second. Um, or the other option is that I nest them, meaning it will maintain all of the motion keyframes that I've set within that particular uh, piece of uh, footage, that clip of footage. 
So right now all I'm gonna do is click create um, and it's gonna go through and start to analyze each individual clip, each frame of each clip, because it's going to start to shuffle that piece of footage around from a motion point of view, automatically add keyframes so that it can see exactly what the most important part of that clip is, meaning, what is the subject of that particular clip? Um, and should we frame it in a particular way, usually in the center of the frame? Um, and so when it goes through and starts to analyze that, that's what it's doing. The program is making an assessment on what the important parts of that frame would be. Now I would say about 80% of the time it actually gets it correct. And I'm satisfied with the motion that it puts in there if it's needed or how it frames that particular thing up. But let's see if we can find something where it just doesn't get it at all. This one you can see there's a bunch of stuff on the outside and it kicked this piece of footage over to the side. Now the most important part of this footage is the guy driving the car. So I'm gonna go through and actually reframe it in myself. I'm gonna size this up, I gotta scale it up and then I'm gonna make sure that I kinda bring him over just a little bit so that he's in the center of the frame. Now usually I don't like putting things in the center of the frame but on a one by one I really don't have a ton of options to do so. But yeah, now you see that I've kind of been able to manipulate and put him in the center of the frame, which is all I want. So this analysis process is actually pretty fast depending on the speed of your computer. Right now I'm actually doing a screen grab and trying to analyze and render at the same time. So CPU usage is up a little bit higher than normal. Um, but usually in a piece like this, it's 30-ish seconds. Um, I'm done with this analysis in less than a minute to two minutes. Um, then I have to, like I said, I always go back in and watch what happened. Um, and usually what I'll see is if I go up into my source window and click on effects controls, you can see all of the different keyframes that the system had populated here. And typically if it's going to move a piece of footage around a lot, uh, there'll be a number of keyframes in this different area. Most of the time I just delete those on my own and I make the determination in terms of where I want that footage to be. I suggest you do the same because a lot of the times the motion will be really quick in between frames. I mean, it ends up looking kind of strange. Um, so even though that happens, it's still a tremendous time saver to be able to go through and create this sequence, get 80% of it right based off of how the program assesses your footage, and then you can move on, create another sequence. So I know again from this 16 by nine sequence, I wanna auto reframe and I wanna put together a nine by 16. So I'm gonna go ahead and go vertical nine by 16. I'm gonna delete my uh, my appendage that I had in there, the 16 by nine that I had in there originally. I'm gonna click on create, and then it's going to create a nine by 16, so a vertical story format. It's gonna analyze everything and do the exact same thing it did before. So another cool thing that happens is that when you go into your projects window, the system creates a bin for auto reframed sequences and it places all the different sequences that it has created into the same bin. So you see it created that one by one and the nine by 16 that we asked it create, which is cool. Now here's the other huge time saver is that you can render these sequences sequences at the same time. The way to do this is by highlighting both of the sequences that you want to render. I can even come down here and get this 16 by nine. Then I'm gonna go up to the sequence file drop down, uh, and I'm gonna go render in and out. And so what it's going to do is it's gonna pop up this render window. And what's important, if you see here, while it's rendering this sequence, it says rendering frames 70 of 2400 and something, but it's sequence one of three. So right now I don't have to sit here and babysit this. I can actually get up, go get a cup of coffee and know that my system is processing a sequence uh, one of three. It's gonna process three different sequences for me without me even having to sit here and babysit the thing, which is a huge time saver. Um, oftentimes I'm, I'm editing a project that has you know multiple things, literally dozens of videos in it. Um, and so to be able to just say, render all of these videos in and out, it may take a little bit of time, but I don't have to sit there, wait for one to finish and go back and add another one to the queue, wait for that to finish. I could just set all three or however many there are, render in and out, and I'm good to go. So that's how I've been using auto reframe in these sequences. Um, almost all of my clients, again, are requesting different 
aspect ratios for different platforms. I used to have to do this process manually and literally go in and resize every single cut that I made for every piece of footage, which is a huge pain in the ass. So this takes away the majority of that work. Um, it's pretty smart in the way that it's doing things. A few small adjustments that I have to do, which is totally fine compared to what the time saving it is. And then I just go in and I render out those sequences, um, all three at the same time. Uh, and then I uh, export them using the media encoder, which I've done a video about and you can see wherever the thing ends up. So with that being said, let's pop back into the studio and uh, we'll finish it up there. All right, ladies and germs. So there you have it. A real world practical application of how I'm using auto reframe to really simplify my workflow and speed things up in terms of the amount of deliverables that I can give to clients and the amount of speed in which I can do so. I, like I said, you know the deal with the like, share, subscribe stuff. We're not going to go into that all the time, but this is Robert Teagarden with a quick tip tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you in the next one.